Produce coffee producers and farmers joined the protests and began a nationwide strike on Monday. They demanded an end to the repression, the resignation of Dina Boluarte and a new constitution. Under the President, Xiomara Castro will present on Monday the administration's annual report of her first year in office. The Secretary General of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, Jens Stoltenberg, asked South Korea to increase its military support for Ukraine as soon as possible. Peru's coffee producers and farmers joined the protests and began a nationwide strike on Monday. The union demanded the resignation of current president Dina Boluarte, called for elections in no more than four years, a month of my pardon, a referendum to change the constitution and to stop all attempts to renew concessions to mining companies, among them other measures. The demonstrator was shot in the head and killed on Saturday night. This is the first death in the country's capital since the beginning of the crisis. Peruvian Ansman's office confirmed the homicide. The victim was uh, identified as Victor Santi Esteban. Through a communique, the Ministry of Interior attributed the death to a consensive cut wood behind the area of the result of a blunt. Another version assured that, that a gas said Tirbong as was responsible for it, another person is also reported seriously wounded. On Monday, Honduran President Xiomara Castro will uh, present her annual report on her first year in office. The head of the state's annual report on her administration will be delivered to the people of Honduras after the executive branch presented a first report last Thursday on the National Congress. The documents submitted to the legislators at the highlighted the creation of a new state institutions and the research of entities such as the National Electric Energy Company. The document also detailed the elimination of amendments of blood intended to promote the country's economic development. The International Congress of Pedagogy 2023 is taking place in Havana, Cuba from Monday until February the 3rd. This year's edition brings together some 50 representatives from different countries around the, world. the theme A Better World is Possible. At least 37 ministers and some 18 personalities of recognized prestige in the sectors are attending the event, which will address issues concerning the promotion of an inclusive quality and an equitable education. The hybrid modality session will be focused on promoting the socialization of scientific and knowledge, dialogue and exchange of good participants and results of educational search. As part of the Congress, the first meeting of ministers of the group of 77 that plus China and the second front of entrepreneurs and leaders in the products and services for education will be held at looking the fostered international exchange focus on education. In the U.S. on Sunday, the people staged a third consecutive day of protests against police brutally following the death of African-American Tyre Nichols. Protesters began on Friday in Chicago, Memphis and New York following the release of the video of Nichols' arrest. Protesters continue on Saturday in New York, plus Atlanta, Boston, Baltimore, Los Angeles, San Francisco and Portland. Sunday's protests began at noon in Oakland, California, with a group of demonstrators marching through the city, stopping briefly at the police apartment. Ma Milwaukee, Wisconsin, added to the list on Sunday. Nichols, age 28, was, uh, who was arrested for alleged reckless driving in his uh, motorcycle, died three days later on January 10th from injuries inflicted by five Memphis, now former police officers, who will be prosecuted for allegedly committing murder. Let's take a very short break now, but remember you can now follow us on our TikTok account as Telesur English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates and more. Stay tuned for more news.
y cualquier país que el secretario general de la North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, uh, Jens Stoltenberg, urge South Korea to stop up military support for Ukraine. Stoltenberg made a appeal in the South Korean capital Seoul on Monday during his first in-person trip to Asia that will also include stops in Japan as aims to boost and ties with the region's democratic islands in the face of the conflict in Ukraine and rising competition with China. Speaking in the Kiev Institute for Attendant Studies in Seoul, he thanked South Korea for its non little aid to Ukraine, but urged to do more aid there was an urgent need for ammunition. Moscow has a brand uh, Ukraine's uh, bombing of hospitals as uh, war crimes after the attack on a health center left at least 14 people dead and 24 wounded. On Sunday, the Russian foreign ministry declared that the attack of the Ukrainian troops on medical centers in the cities of uh, Novodark and uh, Konkurkov represented war crimes. They had that the liberated shelling of civilian medical facilities as well as the intentional killing of civilians are serious war crimes of the Kiev regime and its western populars. Chinese Foreign Minister Po Woman Mao Nin said on Monday that the Asian Union is willing to further enhance relations with the community of Latin American Caribbean states, as was uh, demonstrated by President Xi Jinping's speech at the 7th Select Summit during the last uh, past week. Delivering a video address at the CELAC summit upon invitation has demonstrated China's consistent support for the integration process of Latin America and the Caribbean, and the great importance it attached to developing the relations with the CELAC, which was widely praised by countries in the region. Guided by the keynote of President Xi's video address, China is ready to work with Latin American and Caribbean states to continue strengthening the construction of China CELAC Forum and take the China CELAC relations to a new level in the new era of equality, mutual benefit, innovation, openness, and people benefiting orientation, jointly building a China Sela community with a shared future. The Chinese government on Monday denounced the United States for coercing and luring allies against Beijing and after Japan and Netherlands agreed to the deal with the U.S. to restrict China's access to productive supplies. Hegemony and self interests, the U.S. has been abusing export controls, coercing and luring other countries to put up a small circles to contain China and politicizing sky tech and economic and trade issues. This seriously violates marker principles and the international trade order, and China is firmly against it. French Minister of Interior Gerald Dermanin announced on Monday that around 11,000 gendarmen and police officers will be mobilized throughout the country in the face of ongoing demonstrations against the pension reform. The government official added 4,000 of those police officers will be deployed in Paris, the epicenter of the national demonstrations and strikes in the rejection of the project promoted by the government. The project includes the controversial increase in the retirement age from 62 to 64. The decision came after the union call on the population to take to the streets of the capital in order to exceed the massive protests on January 19. On the day that more than 2 million people demonstrated against the pension reform and several demonstrators were victims of police repression. The Spain awaited a tide of some 11,000 people marched on Sunday in Salamanca to defend public health care from the mismanagement of the autonomous community government of Castilla y León and from push to privatize such services. Among the demands made by the Salamanca Citizens Association were the collapse of the emergency rooms and a delay in assigning a shift at hospitals. They also denounced a lack of personnel in rural health care centers in the region. The organizers of the protests point out that according to the official data in Spain, the region of Castilla Leon is the one that uses most of its budgets to health care still in branch for the inequality of health care services due to the poor management.
and on Monday the World Health Organization uh, announced that the maximum alert level of COVID-19 will be maintained three years after the international public emergency for the disease was fair declared. This announcement made by the World Health Organization General Director Tedros Adnahan followed a meeting in the ex-expert committee last Friday. Prior to the meeting, Tedros said that it will have considered a possible lifting of the state of emergency on the DC as a premature move. In many countries, the worry situation continues as there has been a recent increase in the number of fatalities. In the last two months alone, COVID-19 has killed 170,000 people worldwide. Official statistics from World Health Organizations have put a total number of victims of the disease at a close to 7 million, but extend knowledge that the truth figure is much higher. We have more news coming up after this financial break, so don't go away. Welcome back. Israeli forces killed a Palestinian man in a flashpoint city of the occupied West Bank on Monday. The Palestinian Health Ministry said the man, uh, Masin Abu Bufan, 26-year-old, was shot in the head in Hanford after the center of friction between the Israeli military and the Palestinian. The young man was wounded in the head and taken in critical conditions to the hospital where he eventually died. This brings it to 35 that the number of Palestinians killed by Israel fired in 2023 at an average of more than one fatality a day. On Monday, Israeli forces continue to demolish in occupied Jerusalem. Israeli uh, bulldozers uh, demolize a wall, a commercial building, uh, a level of plot of land in the Jalab al Mukader neighborhood in the East Jerusalem as part well of its plan to demolish 14 homes in the area. A two story homes, home to two families, had already been demolished in the same neighborhood on Sunday. This placing uh, the inhabitants, which include children and women. The militias have been on the rise since the inauguration of Netanyahu, whose supporters publicly advocated for the expulsion of Palestinians as well as for the demolition of as many houses as possible to accelerate ethnic currency of Palestinians. On Monday, the U.S. media outlets uh, pointed to Israel as the perpetrator of the failed drone strike against a military plan in Iran, which took place last uh, Saturday. According to the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times, the Israel government was behind uh, the attack. Likewise, an uh, unnamed U.S. Defense Department spokesman told uh, CNN News uh, Networks that, that his country did not carry out attacks or operations inside Iran. Last January 28th, uh, an official communique released in Tehran stated that at 12, 11.30 p.m. local time, uh, there has, was an attack with uh, micro drones in one of the centers of the Ministry of Defense that left no victim but caused minor damage uh, up to the roof of the facility. On Monday in Pakistan, a suicide bomber detonated explosives during the crown of prayers at the mosque inside a police compound, causing the roof to cave in. At least 34 people were killed and more than 100 were wounded. Most of the casualties of the attack were police officers and many were injured when the roof came down. It was not clear how the bomber was able to split it into the compound with houses at the northwestern city of Peshawar's police headquarters and itself located in a high security zone with other government buildings. According to a local police officers, more than 300 housekeepers were praying inside the mosque where the bomber set off his explosive vest. Prime Minister Shazam Sharif condemned the bombing calling at its terrorist suicide attack and ordered authorities to ensure the best possible medical treatment for the victims.
Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov expressed his condolences on Monday after a suicide bomber truck inside a mosque within a police compound in the northwestern Pakistani city of Peshawar. Talks. We got a message about another terrorist attack near a mosque in Peshawar. There are casualties. We join in expressing condolences, but at the same time, we insist that the fight against terrorism should be activated in the war and should be conducted without any double standards and attempts to play games with terrorist groups to achieve political goals. Afghanistan's ongoing humanitarian crisis has worsened in the current winter season as a result of the continual lack of food and heat in supplies. Extremely chilling weather and snowfall have swept through parts of Afghanistan since the first week of January when the temperatures fell to minimums of 30 degrees Celsius in some areas. According to the Ministry of Natural Disasters Management and Humanitarian Affairs, Heavy snowfall and freezing weather have claimed more than 100 lives, including children and women, over the past three weeks. The country is still facing a humanitarian crisis due to the two decades of war which by the U.S. and economic sanctions imposed after the withdrawal of its troops. And heavy snowfall hits a part of northern Iraq, blanketing the Saran district near the Erbil and blocking roads in several locations. According to a local news channel, at least 60 centimeters of snow had fallen in the previous 24 hours as part of the Saran district. Snow is not unusual in the winter in Iraq's um, mountainous north. It often shut down traffic in the winter months or days on end in trade and traffic with countries and Turkey. Authorities warn citizens not to choose the border with both nations unless it is urgent as heavy snow and wind made driving conditions difficult. Monday, India has paid tribute to the father of the nation, Mohammed Gandhi, on the 75th anniversary of his assassination. Gandhi was a central figure of the movement for the national independence from British colonial rule. On this date, which is also Martyrs Day, President Draupadi Murmu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi laid out with the weather at the Radagata Memorial, the site where Mohammed Gandhi was cremated in 1948. The tribute ceremonies includes an uh, interfaith uh, prayers uh, meeting uh, at the redemption of some of Muhammad's uh, favorite sons in a session attended by the students and uh, personalities from all walks of life. Also, participants uh, observed uh, two minutes of silence honoring in the father of India, who was shot dead at 74 year old. So we have come to the end of this news brief. But you can find these and many other stories, of, uh, of, no, stories on our website at telesenglish.net. You can also join us on our socials. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For Telesen English, I'm from the South. I'm Ana Marrera, and thank you for watching.